Life without Big Bertha now is wonderful. I don't miss her. <laughs> um, I think about her a lot, and I look at some of the pictures, and I just can't believe it's gone. While Daisy Hill waited to get medical help until it was almost too late, young Tyler Bertielli's parents spent almost his entire life going from one doctor to another, desperate to find out what was causing his terrifying symptoms. By midsummer of 2002, Janelle and Andy Bertielli had been trying to conceive their first child together for almost two years. We finally just gave up and said, I guess we're not meant to have any children and We'll just let nature take its course, and if it happens, it happens. The young couple remains hopeful, but in the meantime, they're content to focus all of their energy on raising eight-year-old Isabella, Janelle's daughter from a previous marriage. Then, three months later, on a whim, Janelle takes a pregnancy test. It came up positive, so it was like, okay, I, I'm pregnant. Oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. She's like, guess what? I was really excited because for me, it'd be my first time going through the whole baby experience. On June 28, 2003, seven pound, three ounce Tyler Bertielli is born. He was perfect in every way. He had 10 fingers, 10 toes, you know, it just, just a perfect little angel. When Tyler turns six months old, Janelle introduces him to solid foods, just like she did with her daughter. But she isn't prepared for his reaction. He didn't really take it that great. He didn't eat it that well, but you know, he kind of got a little bit down. Two weeks later, she is alarmed when she realizes that her son hasn't had a bowel movement in days. And then it continued on to a couple days turned into a week of no bowel movement. The experienced mother is now sure that something is very wrong with her son. You could tell that there was a level of pain there, but he was pretty good at hiding it. She immediately takes Tyler in to see the family pediatrician. She felt Tyler's tummy, and she said, you know, it feels a little firm, but, you know, nothing's really wrong with it. The doctor assures her that breastfed babies often experience a little constipation when they transition to solid foods. She prescribes a gentle laxative and instructs Janelle to give it to him once a day. Relieved that there is nothing seriously wrong, she diligently follows the doctor's orders. I did what she told me to, because she's the doctor. They give Tyler the laxative as instructed, but he just seems to be getting more uncomfortable. He was crying a lot in pain. It just didn't seem right to me. As time went on, I became more and more aware that something was definitely wrong. Then, along with Tyler's stomach pain, comes a shocking new symptom. It was like his belly never went down to a flat little belly. He always had a little pot belly. I was starting to get worried if that was causing any damage to him, not having a bowel movement for two weeks. Over the next 12 months, Janelle takes her son to a series of doctors. But over and over, she's told the same thing. Tyler's bouts of constipation are normal. Tyler was miserable, as you can imagine. We knew that there was something wrong with him, but the doctors were not helpful. One doctor even theorizes that all of Tyler's problems are, in fact, psychological. He said that it's quite possible that one time that Tyler went to the bathroom and it hurt. And so then he just decided that, I don't like that hurt feeling, and I'm just going to hold it back. That was so ridiculous. I just couldn't believe that anybody would say something like that. As their frustration with the medical experts mounts, the Bercielli's decide to take matters into their own hands. I felt like I couldn't trust any doctor. They just kept throwing answers at us and nothing really seemed to stick. Janelle soon begins experimenting with a variety of home remedies, from fruit juices to homemade muffins to infant massage. But despite all her efforts, Tyler is still only having a bowel movement once a month. You feel sad, you feel bad for him. You feel like you should do something to relieve his pain or do something to make him more comfortable. Then, just before Tyler's second birthday, Janelle notices a terrifying new symptom. One day, his little tummy just seemed more bloated than normally. 
and it just was really, really hard, almost, almost as hard as a rock, and I just knew something wasn't right. That was very scary. This little guy was so, so sick, and he was so miserable. Janelle packs Tyler into the car and races him to the pediatrician's office. As soon as she feels Tyler's abdomen, the doctor orders an x-ray. For the first time in a year and a half, she seems to be taking Janelle's concerns seriously. The doctor comes back into the um, exam room and brings the x-ray with her and shows me that there is a blockage. The doctor is concerned that if they don't remove whatever is blocking Tyler's intestines immediately, a severe infection could develop. I was pretty scared because she was really serious about this. It needed to get removed. Willing to try anything at this point, the Bercielli's agree to let the doctor administer a powerful medication through an NG tube, a plastic hose that goes through Tyler's nose and down into his stomach. They didn't sedate him. I can't imagine them doing that for a little boy. Judy and I had to physically hold him down because he was just kicking and screaming and just freaking out. He had never done anything like this before, so it was very traumatic for him. After two excruciating hours, it's clear the medication isn't doing the trick. Tyler is still blocked up, so the pediatrician orders a series of enemas. One nurse was doing an enema, and the other nurse was also helping hold him down as well. And they basically kept coming back in to do this, like every 20 minutes, over and over and over again. Over the next three hours, Tyler endures four enemas during each hour, all in conjunction with the potent medication being pumped through the NG tube. And still, the blockage isn't budging. Janelle and Judy can't quite believe what's going on, but they're struggling to keep it together for Tyler's sake. He was fighting us for all he was worth. It was a miserable experience. It was like torture. In the past 18 months, two-year-old Tyler Bercielli has had less than 20 bowel movements. We've had Tyler on every prayer list that we've known about. <laughs> People all over the country praying for him, this thing and that thing. Every doctor he's been to has assured his parents that he's simply constipated and will eventually start going to the bathroom on a regular basis. But when the family physician takes an x-ray of his abdomen, it's clear that almost his entire colon is blocked. She's now ordered an intense round of enemas to help flush out his system. I felt horrible. I felt like we were torturing him. Here we are, we've got this little boy who's not even two yet, going through this horrible, horrible experience. After watching her son suffer through more than a dozen unsuccessful enemas, Janelle can't take it anymore. I'm his only advocate. I need to be his voice. He's two years old. He's still a baby. Even though the doctor is confident that the procedure will eventually help Tyler pass the blockage, his mother and grandmother insist on calling the whole thing off. We just said, this is enough. We shouldn't have allowed them to put him through so much pain. The thing is, at the time, you assume that the doctor knows what she's doing. Janelle does all that she can to help Tyler recover from the nightmarish experience. And when he finally goes to the bathroom two days later, the Bercielli's breathe a huge sigh of relief. I can see the light now at the end of the tunnel here. I was really hopeful that, you know, very shortly, we were going to be able to fix this problem. But just when they think everything is OK, the chronic constipation returns with a vengeance. The pattern started all over again. First, it was a week with no bowel movement, and then it was two weeks, and then it was three weeks. Oh, poor little guy. He, you could tell that he was miserable. You know, he would, he would double over in pain. His abdomen would get so so distended, it just looked like it might explode. It was very frightening sometimes. Desperate to help her son, Janelle tracks down a pediatric gastroenterologist and walks her through Tyler's entire medical history. She said that we're gonna get to the bottom of this. We're gonna, we're gonna figure this out. I just was really hopeful that she was gonna be able to help us. Determined to solve the case, 
The doctor admits Tyler to the hospital so that she can run a series of tests 